Bill Domestic Junction Trustees meeting for Tuesday, October 8th. Please stand and join me to applaud. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Manager, are there any agenda additions or changes? There are none. Hearing none, then we have no need to approve the agenda, since there were no changes. So that will bring us to the public to be heard. Now is the point in time in the meeting where if there is something that somebody would like to speak to that is uh, not on the agenda, now is the time to do that. If you're unsure, you can ask me and I can tell you when is the appropriate time. Um, if it is the two of you who are here for a planning commission uh, appointment <laughs> or interview, then hang on a few moments and we'll get right to that. But seeing as there's nobody else in the audience, we can move on. So going on to business items, uh, 5A, interview for planning commission with uh, Philip Battalion. Did I yep. say that correctly? Yeah. Awesome, great. If you want to come on up, uh, have a seat up at the, the table here. Love to have you join us. Any more? In this? Welcome and thank you for coming. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hey, Phil. Hi there. Hi. So do you prefer Philip, Phil? Feels good. Feels good? Yeah. So we have your, uh, your letter. Um, yeah. If you would like to elaborate a little bit as to why you're interested and what you hope to, to bring to the planning commission. Um, as I said in my letter, I just I am eager to just be involved in the community, involved in uh, the local government. Um, I, I wrote that I feel on, like honored that in Vermont you can be a part of local government. It's pretty easy uh, with the amount of population that we have. Um, I'm originally from New Jersey, right outside New York City. So uh, that's not really the case down there. So um, honestly, I'm just eager to learn. I, I'm eager to be involved. And I don't have any other prior uh, commission experience or local government experience. Um, but mainly, I saw, the, I saw it come up on Front Porch Forum. And I said, oh, that sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw the opportunity. I thought, why not? Why not go for it? That's very cool. Yeah. Along the lines of the Planning Commission, what do you think of the things that are going on around here? Uh, um, so in a couple meetings with Robin, um, I did, he did go over the, some of the stuff that's going on. And I, I've looked on the website, and I think it's great. I think it's important to, to plan for the future. And um, coming from Pleasant Street and driving through Five Corners every day, I understand the, the trouble with the traffic. And, <laughs> Uh, I was always one of the ones trying to go around it all, so I think it's important to mitigate that. But also, you know, it is the center of the village, so making sure that it stays in place that people want to come to and not just drive around. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Robin's plans show that, um, and I think that's important for the village to continue to, to grow and be a place where people want to come come to. Mm -hmm. Other trustees, and I'll down here. Um, Phil, one of the things that uh, I, I've asked this before, you know, sometimes the Planning Commission has controversial applications in front of them that are going to have an impact on the neighborhood. Um, it, it conforms to the, all the regulations and policies and everything, yet nevertheless, some people, you're dealing with the public. You're not dealing, it's not a business, so anyone can walk in here and criticize you. Feelings about that? Have you had any experience about that? Of course, you. I just want to buffer it by saying you'll be you'd be on a board with a bunch of sure. other people. They're not going to come right at you. But yeah. your feelings about that? Uh, I got pretty thick skin. Okay. I'm not worried about the. You know, I don't take things personally. Um, my understanding too about the commission is that you know if it fits all the standards and it fits the policies that you know that's kind of where our where we where we lay our boat. You know, we're not we're not deciding. We're not the people that are deciding that. That's for the policies and the plan to decide. Mm -hmm. So um, no, I have no, I have no um, fears of that or being singled out. Um, do you generally do you like sort of technical? Again, we've got we've got two former planning commissioners here, um, so I don't want to misspeak. But you know, looking at looking at plans, building plans, technical design. Like that kind of stuff? Do you I, yeah, yeah, I do enjoy that stuff. I'm, 
I'm always the person that friends go to read contracts or legalese or stuff like that. I just mm -hmm. I have a very logical thought process, and that just it just clicks with me. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I can I can understand those types of things and and work with that sort of <clears throat> technical language. Mm -hmm. I kind of understand. I'll keep going unless someone else wants to jump in here. <laughs> okay. I, I, I just want to get another sense. Um, you know, as you look around, just give me your thoughts about. And this is not. There's not a. This isn't. There's no an specific answer, but you know, kind of what we're going for here uh, in terms of building design in the village center. You, you can. I mean, this is one of the most the thing on the corner, the building on the corner, McGill County. That was probably one of the most controversial things. Um, I think most of us really like it, um, but some people didn't think it was good. Um, but it's it's got a specific design, it's got a certain taste to it. I think what we're going for here is sort of old New England brick mm -hmm. mortar kind of thing. Uh, we can't necessarily impose that, but that's kind of the look and feel. You, again, your thoughts on that. Any, any thoughts about architecture, what you'd like to see kinds of uh, uh, thinking about this? I mean, of course, I'm a huge fan of the like New England architecture and um, kind of that style. I understand, though, that you know today it's very hard to get that done affordably. Yeah. I mean, you can't. You don't have people like artisans that can make sculptures and do woodwork and stuff like that. But right. but I think I think it's important to kind of keep that feel where you can, whether it's like brick face or in keeping that with some of the other, keeping that look with some of the other older buildings in the junction. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I mean, some places do it really bad. I don't, I don't see that as being right. a design failure or anything like that. I think it looks great. And I think it's also about, you know, my feeling is that, you know, we, Essex has such a high, high de higher density population. Um, it can be construed as a sort of urban, more urban environment. Yeah. And I think, especially in Vermont, where you have the concentrations of the people um, creating more of that urban environment, especially for younger people that are looking to have a more city-like life. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to also address that. And like, personally, I know myself and, um, and other people my age, like we wanna have a downtown where we can go and we can go get coffee or we can go to a bar or we can go to the, the cafe now, Firebird Cafe. We yeah. wanna, that was the main reason why my wife and I moved to the village is we, always, we knew that, we previously lived in Burlington and um, we knew we wanted to, one, we couldn't afford Burlington and we wanted to get out. Yeah. But we knew we wanted to be within walking distance of a village. We wanted to still have that community feel. We wanted to have a place to walk and go downtown and have that atmosphere. And I think that's important to mm -hmm. have. And I think, I think planning for the future for 20 years down the line, 40 years down the line, that's going to be important for people to want to stick around as well. Okay. So you, you mentioned that. I appreciate that. You mentioned the, uh, you know, creating or nurturing a downtown where people feel like they can walk and you know to, to different activities um, you know we're a commuter pass-through community with Route 15 a lot of you know this this intersection a lot of different routes to go through it for Jericho Underhill and a lot of those areas um, how do you I don't know what my question is now um, it's the cold. yeah it's the cold how do you uh, how do you balance those pressures with um, trying to to nurture the village through a, a walkable, welcoming uh, downtown with the traffic pressures that, uh, that that we experience here. Yeah, you, you talked to Robinson. You're aware that they want to put this five corner plan. We're, yeah, we're the, for, the Crescent Connector. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's key. I think being able to route the traffic around the downtown area um, seems to be important. But I think not it's tough because so you hear about so many places where you know you they put in like a highway or some sort of connector that not nobody comes downtown <clears throat> and so it's important to i think and it seems like that is the plan is to make that connector also part of the downtown area and have places where people are going and you have parking off of that and um 
So making that still feel like this is downtown um, and you know the village. And so yeah, I understand that that balance and it's tough and you know. But if it means that people from Jericho and Underhill can come through and they can stop and they can get a breakfast sandwich or they can get a coffee on their way on their way in and not not sit in traffic for 15 minutes because they did it then then that that's a huge plus too right mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah um just curious i know you're new to the village and um you want to get involved we have uh, two openings but four people and i'm just curious if you're not selected would you be interested in another position would oh absolutely is there anything in particular you i mean are there the areas that you just Honestly, I'd be interested in any any opening there is. I think, I think, just the front porch forum posting just caught my eye, and that got me. I I felt like I wanted to be involved, and um, now I and I felt after two years, I was like, yeah. It's, One other uh, follow-up: Have you been involved with any other um, groups? I mean, um, uh, like in my former job, I was with the state police, and I was on their state police. Um, bargaining team and um, union rep and did things involved, you know, have you been involved in any organizations or uh, boards that, you know? Uh, I haven't been, I haven't been involved in any organizations or boards per se. I am heavily involved in um, the old uh, summer camp that I used to work at mm -hmm. um, in Sharon, Vermont. Okay. And um, just uh, it's Camp Downer. I don't know if mm -hmm. you guys heard about yep. it. And so I just I help them out a bunch as much as possible, volunteer time to help them. Okay. Do that. Thanks. Yeah. Amber, sorry. So I'm sure Robin probably told you that the standard is a first and third. I think it is. Uh, so twice a month that they meet. Mm -hmm. um, does that pose any issues for you? It does not. Okay. I actually work from home on Thursdays, so oh, nice. So I yeah, I can just walk over. So you could do two or three boards. <laughs> <laughs> can, uh, what else do we have? You can fly with all on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> all the ones on Thursday. Just a little. Thursday Thursday the just a little I, I don't want to be intrusive, but uh, anything relevant that we you'd like us to know in terms of your background? Uh, sure. Um, I grew up in New Jersey, like I said. Mm -hmm. um, background. I, Educational background. I went to school in Boston at Emerson College. Mm -hmm. um, I have a degree in uh, marketing communications and media production from them. Mm -hmm. uh, I went through a lot of different changes in my what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I um, I moved out to Colorado in two thousand six with my wife, my current wife, not wife at the time, and um, thought I wanted to be uh, a park ranger. Mm -hmm. Went to school for that at um, did a community college. Mm -hmm program and then worked for the U.S. Forest Service as a park ranger and went back to school undergraduate at CU for biology. I completed all of the biology coursework with them. When I came out here um, in 2010, that's when we moved back here, my wife is from Vermont originally, from the NEK in Walden. Oh. And, um, I worked when I moved came, when we moved back here in 2010. I worked for the VYCC mm -hmm. as a, a community crew leader um, out of Burlington. Worked uh, lived at home, but had my crew all over Chittenden County building. Uh, we built bridges, uh, six different bridges that season. Mm -hmm. And um, that summer, that winter, sorry, when I needed something between the seasons, because obviously that kind of work is all seasonal. Um, my friend who started the current company that I work for uh, was looking for uh, work and I reached out to him and I said, hey, can you give me something for the, like, until April or something? Um, and uh, I've been there eight years now. <laughs> 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 nice. So I, when I started working for my current company, it's called Network Craze Technologies. Um, mm -hmm. We were in Basin, Burlington. Now we, we moved to Williston this summer. Mm -hmm. But um, we're a IT hardware reseller. And so when I worked, when I started working for them, we had four people, and we were about three million dollar company. And now we have twenty in operations, which is here in Vermont. And now we're about a thirty million dollar company. Mm. So and I, I, I've seen everything from like on, in operations from the bottom up, and yeah. it's been it's been so much fun and. I love the people I work with, and it's mm -hmm. 
I love the job I do. I'm the operations coordinator <coughs> now, and so um, every day is just putting out fires <laughs> and, and figuring out why things are going wrong <laughs> and trying to make them right. Mm -hmm. But I love it, and that's why I, I wouldn't be there for eight years. Yep. 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 Great. Nice. Fantastic. Thank you. That's yeah. quite a history. <laughs> I bounced around a bunch no, of places. That's, that's a great history. Bounce around always great. <clears throat> Does anybody have any other questions? All right, well, Phil, we thank you for your time. Uh, thank just you. see how the process will, or the way the process will work. There are four uh, individuals who are looking for two seats. Uh, we're finishing the interviews today. Whether we make a decision today, I'm unsure of. Uh, it may take another few weeks, um, but we will certainly be in touch with you know, regardless of what happens. Okay, sounds um, great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you too. And Evan, I assume you're going to get that. Thanks again. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Nine. And next we have Patrick Sheld. Is it not Shield, right? Sheld. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming today. Uh, as I had said, so with a seat that's uh, open, two seats that are open for the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. um, would love to have have you start off with a little bit as to who you are, why you're interested, and what you hope to to get out of the opportunity. Sure, absolutely. Well, first off, thanks for uh, inviting me on in. Uh, name's Patrick Sheld. Um, you know, and my motivation, I suppose, uh, comes from, um, well, I, to some respect, kind of do this a little bit um, with the state of Vermont. Uh, I work for the Agency of Commerce and Community Development within the Department of Housing and Community Development, and more specifically, the Vermont Community Development Program, uh, and we administer the state CDBG program, that Community Development Block Grants from HUD. Uh, so a lot of what I do is going around to municipalities throughout the state, um, sitting down with them when they have community development projects, anything from affordable housing to infrastructure projects, uh, community centers, child care centers. Um, we do some with businesses for job creation. But basically, um, you know, when, they, when the town sees a piece of their municipal plan that they want to enact and implement, um, they will seek funding from our program. So I'll sit down and help them kind of corral some of their funding sources, um, discuss the project with them, figure out if it is the best location, you know, how it's all gonna work, but ultimately leave it up to the town to make their decision and then they apply for our funding. Um, and so I saw this opportunity pop up on Front Porch Forum probably sometime in August, uh, piqued my interest, um, but kind of shelved it a little bit thinking that you know it's kind of what I do to an extent uh, around the state, working with different municipalities and thought maybe somebody else in the village might step up and uh, give somebody else the opportunity uh, and saw it pop up again in September and thought, well, maybe I should throw my hat in the ring and, um, and see how things kind of transpire. So um, that's kind of what I did and that's what leads me here sitting in front of you guys today. And so what, would, what is it you would hope to get out of the, uh, the opportunity if you were appointed to the Planning Commission? Uh, to see the village kind of uh, progress forward, basically. Um, you know, it's uh, five corners, it's been five corners for, well, for as long as I've lived here, and it looks tired. Um, some of the buildings are old, for sure. Um, and, you know, I see a lot of other towns throughout the state taking steps forward and taking those advancements. I mean, just here in Chittenden County, you have the new city center that's going in in South Burlington. Colchester has their severance corners that's been going for a while um, that they're trying to acquire funding for. Uh, and, um, you know, Williston with everything they have going on, of course, Winooski with all the developments they've had the past few years, and, you know, it's, it's the village's turn. You know, it's our turn to kind of, um, for lack of a better phrase, keep up with the Joneses to, to an extent, because um, if uh, there isn't much progress and uh, development moving forward, um, it's going to be kind of forgotten to an extent, and people will kind of bypass the village altogether and look for other places to live. Um, you know, I've seen the uh, and read through the municipal or the uh, Five Corners plan to kind of redevelop and um, love the idea and would love to see it implemented. Um, I think it's something, a great facelift that would uh, be awesome for this little area. Uh, the one thing that I do question with it is the, uh, the little corridor, the, the bypass, as you will, uh, that would create two back-to-back -back stoplights on 117 heading down Maple Street that I could see potentially being an issue, but if you're going to eventually um, 
turn uh, Main Street there into a pedestrian way, uh, you have to figure out a way to kind of get around it. And that seems to be, from uh, the little bit that I've read and looked into, probably the best solution at the, at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, I, mean, I think, think that's great. Um, you know, one thing we try and stress in, uh, at the Department of Housing and Community Development is infill development and really trying to concentrate um, building and development in and around the village centers uh, to kind of in some ways prevent sprawl from happening, which you know, the village where it's kind of difficult, there's not very many other places I feel like that could be built because um, we're kind of contained on all sides. Um, but seeing the plan to have all that infill development and create all that housing, um, it's, you know, I think it's really going to revitalize the village uh, and everything that goes on here and then in turn through an eventual merger with the town, it's only going to be an asset to the town as well. So, so my, my last question before I turn it over to others is if you had your crystal ball, uh, what, would, what would the village look like to you? Uh, ultimately, it would be a place where uh, we, my wife and I wouldn't leave. Um, you know, we, we uh, you know, on weekends, you, know, you get tired of cooking at home, so you decide to go out to a restaurant or go grab a drink or something. We'll walk in and uh, grab a drink and some tacos at El Gato occasionally, because uh, my wife has a good friend that bartends there. But other than that, I mean, we look to Winooski, we go to Williston, we go other places, and I would love to just stay here, leave my car in my driveway, walk into town, and spend my money here in the village. I mean, that would be my crystal ball, is to see kind of, um, you know, I think Winooski's done a, a really good job at developing their, I don't know what you would call it, their circular, it's not really a rotary, it's not a, but they've done it, yeah. <laughs> uh, they've done a pretty good job in uh, creating housing in and around that area, which has really revitalized a lot of Winooski uh, and that whole downtown corridor. Uh, and that's kind of where I, I see the start of it all. Is you gotta, you gotta bring people in. You gotta get them to live here. You gotta create housing, uh, and businesses will follow. I think. Yeah. Who wants next? Rush. <coughs> so back, back, way back on the bike walk committee. Yeah. Um, we couldn't talk into doing that. Um, yeah, I do because, apologize for that. No, it's okay. <laughs> a couple of conflicts with meetings, and I felt bad yeah, coming walking in a couple months after. Totally fine. Excited to see your application for this. I am. And this is just me wondering, I guess, um, do you see any conflict of interest issues? Mm -hmm. If you're, this is the work you're doing during the day, you're coming to the village, making decisions on projects that maybe you worked on, I'm, I'm just wondering how that, how that could play out. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, it, where I really see the only uh, true conflict of interest is if the um, village decided to uh, apply for funding from my program. I would have to recuse myself from um, from that, I mean, I'd have to probably talk to our department lawyer, our legal counsel, and see uh, how far I can go along in that process. And if I decide to stick with the planning, uh, with the village, uh, then I'd have to recuse myself maybe from my decisions at my job, which is fine. We have a small staff and somebody else could take up that application. Um, or it would just have to be recusing myself from uh, conversations regarding that application. Um, but, you know, outside of that, uh, you know, I work closely with um, the Division of Historic Preservation. They sit right next to me in the department, uh, closely with the uh, Division of Community Planning and Revitalization, CPNR. Um, so in some ways, um, you know, not that I could necessarily lobby to get things brought in, but I can at least, you know, I have their ear and I can talk kind of um, um, off the books a little bit and kind of get a sense for um, different ideas and, and uh, funding situations that they might have. And, um, I know one big thing that CPNR, uh, Community Planning Revitalization, pushes for is placemaking and infill development. So it's really figuring out what it is that um, creates the identity of where you live and what it is. Um, in, some, in some ways, I think here in the village, it's five corners. And by turning it into four corners, you might kind of step away from that a little bit. But I think there are ways in which you can um, still use that five corners, that history, um, maybe kind of market in some way, put up some signage, and you would still have that corridor of Main Street that would be a pedestrian way that you could say, historically, this was a, a, a driving area where cars went down, uh, and that's where we get our name, Five Corners. So you can still kind of, I think, hold on to that identity. Um, 
Patrick, what do you, as you look around, what are we doing right? Do you see, you see anything that really strikes you as good, good example, you know, good things, good, smart ideas, anything? You know, probably no right answer, but I'm just curious if you see anything that um, strikes you. So, just, uh, I mean, in some respects, just the construction. I mean, seeing the McGillicuddy's building go in, I mean, Robin explained a little bit why some of those storefronts are vacant from his point of view, and mm -hmm. um, it kind of made sense that the owner of the building is. It's all leased up for housing, and, and McGillicuddy's has a long lease, and so he's not really in a big rush to fill uh, the other businesses uh, until he refinances. And um, So I get it. He's kind of playing the game a little bit, and it's mm -hmm. set up as such for him to be able to do so, which is for better or for worse. Um, but the senior housing that's going in, um, and I think the... You know, the plan that has been out there for a few years now that's gone through a couple of probably iterations and through yep. plenty of public comment, um, yep. I think that's that's where it all kind of uh, comes down to. It's, it's that public process and putting it out there and let people say their piece on it and making changes where needed. And But having that clear vision and knowing what we're moving towards, mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's something that a lot of other towns uh, kind of struggle with. Yeah, is that plan? That we, plan? We, we used to have a, our, our planning, our, our development code used to have uh, 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 allow six story buildings in a village center zone. Um, and and just in, it may be a bit of a political overreaction on our part because of the, the, the pushback we got on mm -hmm. this building, we reduced it to four stories. Thoughts about that? Should we now push it back up or any, any thoughts about that? Uh, my personal feeling? Mm -hmm. uh, push it back up and yeah. people, you know, you're always going to have the NIMBYs not in my backyard. Yeah. That's going to be true no matter what. And um, to some extent, you got to, you know, push past them a little bit, obviously listen to what they have to say because they do have a voice um, yes. and they have concerns. Um, but at the same time, if we listened to every single NIMBY, we'd all be living in wooden shacks still. Mm -hmm. we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be progressing forward. Mm -hmm. um, so. Definitely time and place to have those conversations and to listen to people's concerns and try and um, be, uh, you know, work with them uh, mm -hmm. and compromise with them. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, having a six-story building, I don't feel is the end of the world. I mean, yeah. it creates, yeah. it, it brings people in, it creates more housing, and what you need is density and housing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. There's a follow-up to that. If all of the comments you hear, though, is that they don't want six-story buildings, would you still feel like that's still something they need to get used to, or is that something you're willing to listen to? Uh, always willing to listen. Um, I will always have my opinion, and that's why we have a, a whole commission to make votes. And you know, I may vote against some of my commission members saying that I want six stories, but that's why there's seven of us uh, on the commission. Okay. Amber? Oh, it's the same question that I just asked you. Okay. Um, so the planning commission typically meets twice a month mm -hmm. um, for a couple hours. That works out with your schedule. You don't have any issues being a couple of times a month. Um, I think it's usually the first and the third Thursday. It's yeah. A couple months. Um, so uh, state hours end at four thirty. Um, so uh, you know, work beyond that, and they kind of look at you like you're an overachiever. Um, <laughs> But, uh, I mean, my office is down in Montpelier. It takes me 45 minutes to get back, so it's not that bad. I'm usually home by 5.30, 6 o'clock most days. Um, my job really doesn't entail um, many community visits after hours. Most of my visits are uh, during the day. Um, I do have one community visit coming up um, next Thursday evening, which I actually, I think, looked as uh, a planning commission meeting, but that's a rarity. Um, heading up to the town of Richford to help them figure out um, their next steps forward basically um, we're going up as a, a department and there's a, a handful of us that are going to sit down with them and listen to what they think their you know what their needs are and explain to them what our programs can offer yeah um, as you know there's uh, four applicants two positions if you weren't selected is there another would you be interested in any other positions or any yeah, I think I would. Um, I mean, I, as, as Raj said, I, I did try and come out for the uh, bike and, um, and ped commission, but unfortunately the uh, scheduling just didn't work out. Mm -hmm. There were a couple, I think you guys meet once a month or something, and uh, I think I came to one and then had to miss the next two due to vacation scheduling conflicts, and I just felt like it wasn't appropriate to necessarily come back. But Have you been involved with any other boards or commissions um, in the past? I mean, like I said, 
prior prior person here that my occupation prior to, you know was I was a state trooper for 26 years. I was on our our bargaining team, I was involved with the union, involved with the troop association. You no, know, done a little other things here in the village, but just curious, you know, if you have uh, just nonprofit boards. Um, I, um, Attempted to start my own uh, nonprofit years ago. Um, we did end up starting, but never found any funding, so I kind of uh, dissolved uh, and uh, assisted a, a few friends of mine. Uh, so I volunteered in Haiti at one point uh, uh, a number of years back and made a, good, a couple of good Haitian friends who had started a nonprofit in Haiti and were looking for assist development assistance. Um, so I sat on that at the very beginning for about six or seven months, uh, helped them kind of get going. But other than that, that's, I think, my only experience. Good. Good. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions? No, uh, Only the one I would ask uh, was asked of the other candidates. Well, um, at these meetings, not everybody is in favor of what you're doing. How are you in terms of uh, giving bad news, going against what others may say, not just in terms of you have a room full of people, are you going to say no, uh, but having people sit in an audience, stare at you, and tell you, what you're doing is dumb. I think what you're, you're a terrible person for doing this. Please don't do it. Maybe in that was a nice yeah. version. Yeah, in that song. <laughs> uh, I went to so, so our grant program, Vermont Community Development Program, and the CDG grants, I mean, it's a very competitive program, and not everybody gets funded every round, and part of my job is to call those grantees who don't get funding and uh, give them the difficult news that uh, they, it didn't work out this time around. Um, and also to sit and uh, go into a community and tell them that, you know, they put this great idea forward um like uh i suppose up in the it's all public anyway uh town of alberg um applied for a child care center and they had uh, they were looking for implementation money to build the center uh and it just i mean it was like a half-baked idea um i mean it's, the need was clearly stated the impact it would have on the community was clearly stated but um the feasibility of getting of carrying the project out wasn't there so we had to um basically walk back their application uh, and tell them, not now, uh, not the time, but we will help you with planning and the feasibility, and when we get through that, mm -hmm. um, we'll go to the next steps. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's a fair amount of that when I go around the state to, to different towns and let them know that yeah. the project team need to go back to the drawing board a little bit and figure this aspect out and figure this aspect out, and then, we'll, then we can get back together and talk. Okay. So, I think that's it. Thank you. We appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for the opportunity. Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, this is the way that this will work. Is we you are the last uh, of the interviews. We're going to be talking a little bit later on tonight. We may or may not make a decision tonight. And regardless, we'll let you know uh, in terms of uh, what a final decision is. So if you don't hear from us for a little while, please know that we haven't forgotten about you, but we just haven't made a decision yet. Sounds good to me. Great. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good to meet you. So that will bring us on to agenda item 5C about revising the <coughs> Adopt the ordinance revision for no parking on Lincoln Street north of Prospect Street. And our manager just walked out of the room. I'm as back. he's slowly walking back into the room, I'll continue to stall a little bit as he gets comfortable with the topic. Here on. Parking. Okay. Self-explanatory. Um, <laughs> Glad we waited for you. Thanks. Uh, uh, there was a review of the street corner of Prospect and Lincoln 2A. Um, we were getting uh, complaints that when people were pulling out of Prospect, which is one way, you can either turn right or turn left, um, because of the three parking spots where they were located, people who were pulling out to turn left basically had to go f much further than the parked cars to be able to see. Hamlin Engineering did a review. Uh, they recommended that we eliminate the first three parking spaces. Uh, staff uh, also did a site visit, talked with Ricky Jones, uh, Public Works, and uh, with the police department, they said uh, yes, um, that would be uh, very effective. Um, it would also require, we would end up moving one of the signs uh, further up the street, which is no parking from here to the corner, which also will help that um, visibility. 
um, and the police uh, were recommended to do some more speed enforcement, which um, one of the comments was, yes, that's every corner that we have uh, mm -hmm. wants more speed enforcement, but yes, we understand. Um, we'd love to get our speed uh, enforcement officer back on the street. Uh, we're currently short an officer or two, so he's on shift and not able to absolutely do those things. So staff recommends for the uh, cost of striping out those spaces, moving existing signs. This is an appropriate um, activity. This had been here before, but this is the ordinance process. Um, so as you had mentioned that there are two portions of this, or two recommendations that were within the uh, the report. Um, and with just the, uh, the, the site distance, um, those three spaces that equates to the 150 feet that's necessary to, yep. to increase the distance. Yep. They don't start exactly from the corner, the spaces. So there's a space in right. between, but they would be the three spaces uh, closest to the corner of Prospect and Lincoln. Um, we also, one other thing we did, uh, just to let you know, we also looked at those spaces. The, there's rarely cars there, but when they are there, that's when the site is blocked. Do other trustees have other questions, concerns? Yeah, make a motion. Before we do the only thing, I just want to make the plug in for uh, is that first recommendation that our, the engineers make about the targeted speed enforcement. Um, if I'm understanding it correctly, uh, that 85% of those going through, uh, the 85% speed was 34 miles per hour. Is that saying that 85% of the vehicles going through were traveling 34 miles per hour? Is that how that reads? Or is that 85% of the maximum speed? Um, that street is right there is posted, I believe, at 25 miles yeah. per hour. So I would say that it is very likely that there are people speeding through there. Uh, there are no stops mm -hmm. between <laughs> basically 289 yep. and Five Corners. Yeah, that's right. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean they're not supposed to stop. Mm -hmm. There's just mm -hmm. no stop signs. There's no traffic signals. Um, right. So it's a wide open stretch until they come to a screeching halt mm -hmm. um, about a block from here and when the light is red. Traffic will back up to about link a uh, little bit past central, right. but most of the time there's nothing to stop traffic between here and 280. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point. When there's nothing, when you're coming in, because further out two ways pretty high speed, and then they're, they've got a it, long stretch coming in. It slowly into the village, comes down yeah, where there's no stop sign, no traffic lights. So it is 30 miles an hour yeah. a little further yeah. up near CV. So just trying to just make that plug again of w when the three sport the resources are available, uh, right. having a target speed enforcement would be greatly appreciated. Rush. I mean, I emailed you before. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be great to hear what's been done in the past or what's been looked at in the past. Um, do we need with that? I don't know the street name is off the side. Is that North coming into two A at the train tracks, the intersection. Yeah, North. 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 Oh yeah, that, North. that yeah. crazy railroad intersection there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there something that needs to be done there? Yeah. Uh, that can be done there. Yeah. Um, we can look a, into it, but twice part, a day part, of the, area. part of the issue with North Street is that it comes in at an angle and it's very short between well, Lincoln. After you cross the tracks. Once you come in over the tracks, there's a very short distance between the stop sign. And so there, there's a lot of traffic movements that are going on there, including buses. But I, um, I will talk with the uh, engineering department and uh, the police as to what's going on through there but I do know that at Prospect they previously did a few of the bump out stuff mm, to, yeah. to narrow that distance yeah. but I, I would say that 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 particular intersection getting through Prospect is very difficult at some times of the day, especially if you are the second or third car waiting, mm -hmm. and then by the time you do get up there, you yeah. you have lost. Yeah, your I mean, base. I was just thinking about speed. You know, the speed coming off, coming two way up. You know, mm -hmm. if that north and but, the natural intersection to think about some kind of mitigation, yeah. whether it's a light, maybe. But yeah. you're right. right. But beyond but, the tracks. But the other good. interesting thing is, if you are going up two A, we are not having that problem. 
out right. of the village? I, I Leaving the corners, the speeds are not the same. I, I think, Raj, we've gone through this before. I think yeah, that, that sure. yeah. you can't, you, as much as you might want to, I mean, one may want to, you can't just put a, it, it, it has to have certain, I know what you mean, you're saying like, could you put a stop sign there, but well, I, the, I don't think you can. I think you, can, you can't just put a stop sign about. because you feel like it, you know what I mean? You have to have a reason to do it. And, uh, I'm not sure. We'd well, that's what I'm curious about. Like, yeah. what, are the, what are the criteria for that intersection in particular? You'd have to ask the Hamlin. He, he right, would, it would have to pass standards before you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I have a meeting, what are the options? I have I have a meeting to be scheduled with Hamlin. Uh, I'll bring that up. Yeah. I brought all this up back when Gabe Handy was going to put the, the development in right there by Holy, the Holy Family Cemetery right there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, right. And. I, your, what you're saying was a concern back then. I don't know how many years ago it was, but um, and I suggest that. But it's all stuff that would have to go through the state of Vermont, through you know, yeah. transportation, you know, studies and everything. But it's a difficult, it's a difficult intersection. Is you know, yeah. as five corners, anything with the trains, tracks, as the interviewee said, we're kind of you know, yeah. held in, mm -hmm. you know. And it's, it's difficult. Yeah. No, but as I, you know, it's, as we all know, it's also a major oh, it thoroughfare. Is. It is. Yeah. And you know, the Rick's got design plans for two different kinds of student crossings there that never got implemented, um, and also one that's crossing over the train tracks so the students don't do it the way they're currently doing it. And there's all kinds of stuff that he's got in the mm -hmm. books that we've talked about at Bike Walk, um, just for lack of mm -hmm. uh, energy to push them through the. That long process. Yeah. Um, no. But you know, it's only going to get busier. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, so we I'm had just curious what's what's possible or what the criteria are. But yeah. We had UVM students, engineering students, come yeah. and work with uh, with uh, Rick Hamlin, and they came up with a concept with which I applaud. They brought it to us of a rotary. As you come in off of uh, of Main Street, you come to a rotary to keep the traffic flowing there better to move yeah. that through. I mean. Everything would be nice, just takes money, that's all. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, those, those, uh, those capstone projects can be... Yeah. Usually they've got a nugget in them. Yeah. yeah. But often the, they're a capstone project. Yeah. They're, 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 they're showing yeah. up and they're yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the one I love is through A&R with the giant bridge. <laughs> um, <laughs> over the state of Vermont? Over the stream, oh. where they could have just kind of walked around the driveway. Mm -hmm. um, but it was better. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... So. Roger, are we going to make a motion? Unless anybody else sure. wants to say anything. Um, move that the trustees adopt revisions to Chapter 8, Section 802 of the Village Municipal Code to prohibit parking within the public right-of-way on the, on the side of the street so designated on Lincoln Street on the west side from Prospect Street to a point northerly for a distance of 150 feet. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 There we go. Thank you so much. Going on to the next item of the budget schedule. Budget. Spreadsheets. You guys, yeah. come on, a little, right. a little. Spreadsheets. Come on, a little sum for Sarah. So, no. All right, so, <laughs> thank you. Um, Tough crowd. Yeah. Tough crowd. <laughs> so last night, the select board decided to move to a budget day. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. Oh. So we should go to three minutes. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> not necessarily. I mean, yeah. just half an hour time. Yeah. Mm. Uh, budget week. Yeah. As long as it's eight to four, I mean, we do it as long as we want. So, um, Andrew had requested uh, when we first rolled out the tentative budget schedule for the year that we have a more involved discussion about what works best for this group in its current form. That's the question. That We've historically question. done it since I've been on the board. Um, I'm George Dan, I'm not going to speak for either of you, but for my tenure, this is how we had always done it. Yeah. Is there's been a day from 8.30 to 3.30 or so, staff come in, present a budget, and talk, then go about our merry way, comes back to a later uh, public meeting as we're again presenting the budget another two or so times, I believe, in public meetings. Um, but in terms of that budget development, that's really when the meat of things happen. Uh, and so, do we want to continue the way that we've always done things, or try something a little different? So, I just wanted to have a conversation. 
I'll give you one piece of color. When I came, I've been on the board the longest. I, Dan's next, and uh, it, when I came onto the board, they had always been doing it that way. This could stretch back to the 1950s for all of them. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, it was just it was just the long-standing tradition. Um, I don't know if that means keeping it, but I just wanted to add that. As a new member who hasn't done this before, the only concern I would have, just knowing myself, is being able to absorb it and then provide logical feedback in the same day. I understand. So I'm just curious, those other two meetings, how much work is done on that? Those, is it just mostly seeking input? Is it tweaks? It's, it's, I, I can tell you, it's, it's, it, it, the, the thing is it, that each department head comes in and gives about a half an hour or 45 minute presentation and you get to ask questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna bias everything by saying, it's it's also it's also their time to be on stage with us, you know, and so it's a nice interaction that way. Um, I don't feel it's ever been that demanding. We normally we we do most of the the, the deliberation ahead of time. I mean, uh, uh, afterwards uh, in terms of our stuff, and I think. Uh, manager and staff and department heads usually interact, so they, it, it's not like they come in and they, they're proposing a $5 million, you know, they're, you know, some wacky thing. I mean, it's usually pretty, pretty close to what we're doing now. Yeah. yeah. So, sir, maybe you can give them the, you know, the budget document and then the timing of the, the budget day. I think I understand what you're asking yeah. me to do. So, um, and I also want to give you a, some pros and cons from my perspective as well. So here's the, the schedule as it stands now. Everybody has their, not everybody, all general fund departments have their budget template now and they have until Monday, October 28th, which is after audit field work, to fill that out, put in their notes, what are they up to this year, what are their high level goals and initiatives, what did they accomplish last year, and they've been instructed to, other than personnel costs, keep it to a two and a half percent range unless they have some other big initiative um, that they talk to us about. So they will come, those will all come back to me on October 28th, and I'll spend that week compiling um, a town-wide budget and a village-wide budget general fund. And then over the next few weeks, Evan and Greg and I will meet individually with each of them, and we'll go over those, what are their initiatives, what are their goals, what are their priorities, how, how are the lines in this spreadsheet going to fund and support those goals and, and um, priorities, and what did they do last year? And then we'll put our heads together and come up with a final product that will then be delivered to you guys and the town onto the select board in advance of these either budget day or multiple budget work sessions when at which the department heads come back and do the same thing again, but in final format. Is that what you were mm -hmm. after? Okay. What what's going on? But you get them I mean you get, the you get the you get your book, you get your budget book several what well, you know, several days in advance. And, <laughs> it's not, make any it's promises not, for me. It's, it's but, not like no. the day before, here, take this big book. But it also doesn't, I really think that you get the book, and if you want to scour it in advance, great. I think that it really comes to life when everyone gets to come in and talk about it. Some of, uh, on the pro side of things, I think that the budget day format, um, when I was in St. Albans, they, the board had a, a finance subcommittee that would meet over lunch and get the whole budget run down, maybe once or twice, and then they would recommend it to the board. And being able to get the whole picture in one sitting, it's a it's a lot, but you get to you get it all at once instead of you know, you know maybe I'm hungry on this night and I get some of it and I'm tired the next and I'm happy. So it it helps to give you a more complete picture at once. That being said. Dragging it out over a number of meetings maybe allows for a more in-depth look at each of the departments, although, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that, that we're trying to get away from that a little bit and more uh, focus on the high-level goals and priorities of the departments and how they support the goals and priorities of the entire organization. We tend to do all the blocking and tackling. If a line doesn't make sense to us, and we scrub it and we're like, wait a second, you know, let's say you have $10,000 in a, a line activity and for two or three straight years, you've not spent anything close to it. You're not getting $10,000 in that line. Right. Mm -hmm. 
it's just we don't like parking money. Mm -hmm. And if it's if it's something that may happen in the future, then we want to put it somewhere else and then say we will adjust. Those are the types of things. When we tell people you uh, we do not want this and your budget has that, it has to go through me, Sarah, and others first. If there's a policy question of that, then we're open for days. So we have we take a very good pride of scrubbing and then having the people tell you, the departments, what they're going to do with their money this year, what are their goals, what's going on, and then take your questions. Okay. The other thing is, um, Jim and I have been talking about, is this the right time to also do the enterprise fund budgets? Um, in other municipalities, those are done later in the year, which allows more focus to be on the general fund budget this time. Uh, the village charter says that all budgets will be presented to the trustees prior to December 1st. Uh, but what Jim and I have tentatively landed on is that the draft water, sewer, and sanitation expense budgets will be included in that. Um, and then we will likely not go into a lot of detail. What we're thinking is we won't go into a lot of detail on those on budget day to allow us to really focus in on the general fund. And then we'll come back with those at a regularly scheduled meeting. So. I do think that we can get through all of it in a day. It was a little bit tiring last year. It was my first budget day ever. Um, and I think lifting that out allows us to divide and conquer in a way that's, that really plays to the strengths so, that so we've got. Budget day is a, is a long day. It is a, a tiring day. Um, and as George said, the best part is, frankly, that interaction with the, the department heads. Um, we don't. I haven't, I don't want to speak for everybody, but we don't typically go through line by line and say, what is this one for? What is that one for? What is this one for? And to nitpick why the increase is 2% here and a half a percent there, um, it doesn't get to that point. And usually, please correct me if I'm wrong, there have been in the last seven or so years two, maybe three things that in what was recommended we've changed to some capacity. Um, so what gets presented largely is what goes through to a final uh, vote by the, by the community. Um, barring some uh, some things we may want to see differently. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, said Andrew. And I, I also think, Sarah, I can think of, of any of the budgets that we look at, um, usually Jim's budget in terms of the technical stuff that's happening, <laughs> we don't yeah. really get in there and do, mix, oh no, you know, that's way too much for that filter. You know, we don't usually mess around with that. We all so I don't think, I think as long as we get the general trend of where it's going, I yeah. think that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that would be the one I think, I don't think, you know, the whole enterprise fund usually is something that <laughs> yeah. we, don't, we don't open up the hood and mess with the engine right. on that. Other yeah. than the where the uh, electronic meter things going, the electronic water meter yeah. reading, yeah. than that one question. Well, we, <laughs> but, 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 but those are the yeah, fun good. questions. That right. we, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those are the those are the, cause that's, those are the few things that we actually can ask stuff about. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of what we focus on early on is our cost drivers, um, which is personnel. Health it's yeah. health insurance. It's uh, salt, it's sand, salt, paving. Yeah. Those are the things, and if you tell me what the cost of salt is, I'll tell you whether uh, Public Works is going to be on budget this year. Mm -hmm. And you tell me how many days it's going to snow. Right. Yeah, it's the other easy. Um, right. so, there's so many variables in the yeah. whole system. But you've, we, got to, you've got to plan, you know, not go overboard and, and buy, you know, megatons of it, but, you know, what's yeah. reasonable, you know, looking at a 10 year, 20 year bracket and, and and so we, we do a lot of that. We, we do a lot of what's driving our costs, whether we have a particular building project that's going to be the capital driver or whatever it is, or how much uh, is the town contributing in this particular, you know, the, so the public works budget goes over to the town. If it's in the right realm, they just accept it. We dust off the magic eight ball. Yeah. Um, and so what, and, but one of the... No, I was just going to say, you are saying... And it all can go out the window when you have a water main break over on 117, and, yeah. and you, you, you expenditures go right, right through the units. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, you can't. Yeah. You know, when so. when the manager's phone rings at two or three in the morning, it's not a good. It's not yeah. like, hey, buddy, how's your sleep? It's not. Yeah. It's you're not sleeping, and we've got a problem. We don't have a homeowner's policy for this building yeah. to this exemption, so we can't. 
but but a lot of but you know again um, for for the board we try to keep you guys in the policy realm and not how many shovels we're buying because by the time it gets to you we've asked a lot of those questions. Right. So those are the options. Well, so there's uh, we're gonna. I was just gonna weigh in, keep the conversation. Moving. Keep going. Yep, keep. So I originally was like on the fence and thinking I didn't want to. I didn't want to necessarily take a day off from work and just start a new job kind of deal, but I think my best thinking is done during the uh, daytime yeah, hours. Yeah, that's and, the other thing. And so I am changing it up and saying I'm kind of, I'm all in favor of the, a day. Great. I'd agree with that. I just have to confirm I can get it. Great. So I'll have to do that first. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a, a good tradition, and um, I think a, I don't see a big reason to change it. Sure. And I, I and Amber made an excellent point. Mm -hmm. My my yeah. best thinking is not at nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Plus, we'll keep the you know the fewer times we ask staff to come out at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With everything else going on, um, we will feed you. Oh yeah. That's it. And the, and the lunch yeah. part is the best part. Yeah. Food yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, I it's all good. Is the whole thing like? The whole thing we have been saying about you know, not uh, weighing in on each, every shovel that's bought. And I, I'm a big <laughs> proponent of not micromanaging, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what we pick our staff, or we have manager, and the manager picks the staff that he works, and it's all, you know, yeah. that's the way that works as well. The only thing that, um, if staff will please just tell us where we're getting lunch so we don't have to have the, I want to say George, Dan, what was it, four years ago? It took us about 45 minutes to figure out that, where we're Usually the lunch. biggest, most controversial. So uh, we just tell us where we're going. We actually did that in advance. Yes. I believe Tammy, we will do it all the time. We'll probably, I think we didn't know that. Just as long as it's in the village. Don't, yes. don't, yes. don't yes. say, yeah, don't ask where to Colchester we wrap I'll tell you right now, it's going to be Thank you. That's why they're just going to tell us where we're eating. I think that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you then bring our own sandwiches in. All right, Dan. All right, Dan. Uh, no. So no, no, no. 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 no, 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 no. That's right. Come on. That's right. So it sounds like we're good on that. We're yeah. Good on we're good on the agenda item. Okay. Great. That will move. Uh, the, the one last thing I say is not about the process per se. Thank you for having it on non budget day. Um, we set a really difficult bar at two and a half percent. I'm, I'm confident we're going to work hard, but it, it's, it is tough. Health insurance is, this was not the year for me to say two and a half percent. Right. But we, we, health insurance is going to be a significant bump, um, but we're looking at some options. But this is gonna be a heavy lift, we're gonna try. And we'll see, I, I have not seen any of the numbers from any of the departments yet. But it's a heavy lift, so we, but if we had said three, we might see a little higher. If we say two and a half, we might see a, you know something. Can I, can I make yeah. a comment? I, I'd rather, if some department has a cost that's really, they really need to meet and it's gonna push them over mm -hmm. that, I'd rather know about it in December than find out about it in June or July, okay? Right. Yeah. I'd rather have us wrestle with it and <coughs> have them bring it in here. If the fire department has some thing that they really need but you know obviously don't suppress it just so in order to meet some arbitrary number no thank you yeah all right so there's no no need for a vote or a motion on that thank so, you thank you for the conversation so going on to the consent agenda will we approve the consent agenda <laughs> Is there yes. second and all any further discussion all those in favor please aye. signify by aye. saying aye aye, aye. all those, aye. Said aye. All those aye. opposed aye. Great, okay. that passed unanimously because we all said aye. Going into the reading file, uh, first one being board member comments. Does anybody have anything they want to talk about? Amber. I have two comments. Um, one, I would ask as it's kind of moot at this point, but um, we have the decibel readings and reports that the um, folks do, the engineer, sound engineer does for CVE. I'd ask that those are included in our reading file when they are done hmm. so that they can also make its way to the website for folks to be able to see those as well. Mm -hmm. 
My second comment is related to the staff reports. Um, I don't know what the, I mean, obviously I'm a newbie here, I don't know what their, whether this is something that Brownell does on their own or if it's asked for. I really enjoy them, but I would like to have the reports done monthly or when they are done because it seems like we're getting at least three reports every time we get them and so they're, it becomes, you know, 40 pages of reading. So instead of getting the July one in October? In October, if we could get it in uh, August, my mm -hmm. September, something, somewhere in there would be... Something a little bit closer? Yeah. And then you can react to things too if it's closer in time versus, you know, now. I don't know what is <laughs> possible or not, but I have just to a find comment. out. It's, it's good. Uh, it's a good comment um, because of the way their boards meet. Okay. Mm -hmm. It might be the why that it's changed out. Can mm -hmm. I find out? Thank you. That's it. Is anybody else? Um, sorry, sheepish, but uh, bike racks for the front of um, yeah. Firebird Cafe. Where are we? They're going to arrive before winter, I'm guessing, right? I just saw an invoice oh. that is waiting for my approval, so they've been ordered. Does it say excellent looking bike racks? It says Sarah, what account number? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, there is a design that was picked out, there okay. is a insert. Uh, with a design in it, I believe. That, did we agree or did not agree to that? I, I'm happy. I'm trying to. I'm just trying to stay out of it. But, okay. Um, well, I think Robin thought that the. I don't think he's trying to. Okay. I think he's still trying to research. But those were those were. But they're bicycle like looking. The bike, yeah. the, there's Rex coming. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. This has been. Something to look forward to. It's been, it's been, just didn't want the traffic cones to be out there all winter. <laughs> but they're so pretty. Any other board members have anything else? The two things I wanted to just say, um, I noticed the line striping that was done um, looks very nice, yeah. very apparent, can't miss it. Um, <clears throat> appreciate seeing them. And then uh, along the lines with the library reports, one of the things that I found myself wondering is, why do they count everything? I understand that counting <laughs> things is important, <laughs> but yes. to know how many, is it? <laughs> Why can't you read red? No, they're like, like data and organized yeah. and analytical. But are they doing it because they want to, or is it? Has there been a history from the board to say, <laughs> tell us exactly how many people attended every single program? Good to know, but if it's a burden to them, I, I'm, I don't want it to come from us. That maybe it comes from the okay. board. Yeah, I, I, I know, I, I can only say, I don't know, you know, they, they the, the library does a five-year plan, and a lot of the time they look back through five years of data to, that, that helps them make decisions about where to go, you know, more computers, more programs, more books, or something like that, so it might be for their own benefit as well. Okay, as great. As long as... Some kind of grant justification, like, yeah. long-term, like, you know, I just, that's what I think when I read these. As long as it's, it's not interesting to me, but I, I just yeah. wonder if there's a if they have to keep track for some funding. My concern is as long as it wasn't coming from this entity right. or me yeah. on this entity. <laughs> okay, and sometimes it's easier <coughs> to, ca to catalog the data as you get it instead of trying to go back. Also, George, the bike racks are expected to ship on October twenty fourth. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Just in time for the snow. Yes. He, has, he has had. Uh, Standard. He has had some things welded for the front. Um, between the cones. So he, he has been doing some stuff too. Oh yeah, the signs up there that say no. Yeah. That thing. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's wonderful how busy yeah. how busy that is. Okay, and I've true. heard from so many people, I can't even count, that just feel like the last two years with two little additions to the Block. Mm -hmm. What an incredible difference that's made, yeah. and it just—I can really speak for myself. Just makes it very exciting with what yeah. we're thinking. I mean, if those two additions have made that many more people come and spend time downtown, I think. Yeah. That's right. And to see the parking lot, mm -hmm. the public parking lot behind it, yeah. be full. Right? Yeah. It's, it's actually used. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually used. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't for a period of time. It's very cool. It's like it dropped out of the sky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Except it's been there for two years. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Was there anything from else from staff? Um, <coughs> hmm? uh, our budget's 
season, as you as you heard tonight, basically is well underway now. Um, busy. Um, the town adopted its uh, gun discharge ordinance change uh -huh. last night. Then they have to go through the the next phase, but it, that went through last night. Um, survey uh, that's out. I don't want to uh, take too much, but I think we're somewhere near 680, 690 responses. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, we have tried, you know, going out and out. We're not getting that many more responses, so uh, it is coming towards its uh, original uh, destination of ending. Um, they will then do their, their analysis. Um, just busy stuff, busy uh, days, and uh, a lot of, and you are an audit, correct? That's right. So, so Lauren Sarah has been back on Thursdays <laughs> for five hours a week. You can almost like come see her. So ask things of Sarah very gingerly. Or just don't. <laughs> or not at all. Just don't. <laughs> or not. I have no fields of questions for the next few weeks. But we're, you know, we have a great team and I think we're ready. I think we're just a little bit nervous to do it, you know, according to the community. And, you know, no Lauren, no Doug, like the safety net is gone. So it's just exciting. And that's terrifying. Uh, so that will move us to the reading file and then going for executive session. Uh, so at this point, I would move that the trustees enter into executive session to discuss the proposed public official appointments in accordance with 1 PSA, section 31383, and to include the unified manager and the assistant manager. Second. Is there any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 